is found in Jesus, author of our faith. Cause my heart to be in Him and simply His grace. We know His coming from on high is ever near. Hope for every nation, the gospel of the Lord. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the nations and the end shall come. There is hope today and hope for tomorrow for all the earth. Yes, hope for Africa. Shall we bow our head in prayer? Our God and Father, yes, there is hope. And we praise you for this hope. We praise your name for your goodness. We praise your name for who you are in our lives. Especially, Father, we praise your name because it has pleased you to assemble us here these week, these two weeks of evangelistic campaigns where we can hear your word. Father, we have heard. You have talked to our hearts. We have been warned. We have been sobered. We have heard your love. We have heard your message of hope. We have heard your message of peace and joy. We know, Father, that you love us. And it has, you have carried us thus far. And we thank you. And Father, you have sent your servant to come, Pastor Mark Finlay, to share the word to us, to those of us who have heard before and who need to be reminded, to those of our brothers and sisters who have never heard and who need to hear. We praise your name for that. We thank you that in your goodness you have not forgotten this lost world. Yes, we have been rebellious and we ask for forgiveness. But we pray, Father, that now we are coming back home. We want you to give us the hope. We pray that you will be with the pastor. We pray that you will imbue him with your Holy Spirit. We pray that you will protect him. We pray that you will bless his team that is working with him. We pray that you will help his family to support him. We pray for his wife. We pray for everybody around, Father, that is working around him. And we pray, Father, that tonight, especially, you send him the word that you want us to hear. Give us listening ears. Give us receptive hearts. May we, Father, not harden what, when we hear something that may not please us, but we, we know that it is for our good. We thank you for that. We pray that you will help us to keep, to remember. We pray that you will give us the right words to touch one soul out there who needs to come to you badly. We pray that you will touch some of us who may have been here but have gone away far, that you will touch us and bring us home, back home with your hope, Father. Thank you for everything you do for us. 
Bless us tonight. Bless us in the days that are coming and bless your servant. That father, when he has finished, you will turn and you will smile. Smile on him because he's done a good job. Smile on us because we have listened. And father, that we may go out and put in practice. May we not just hear for us, but also be willing to share to those who need to hear. May we catch something and remember to share. Those of us who can invite, may we still invite, Father, and thank you for everything you do for us. Bless us tonight because we have asked all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, good afternoon, good, ev good evening from wherever you are. Behold this evening here in Kenya, Africa, particularly in New Life Church, Nairobi, we have one of the most seasoned televangelists in our time. We have uh, the servant of God whom we have been blessed to host here for the last uh, uh, nearly two weeks in the nearly concluded Hope for Africa evangelistic series. I tell you, this is one of the most commonest names on Adventist book sales, particularly on matters practical evangelism. We are blessed tonight to hear from him. Last evening, he shared with us uh, the blessings from the hope of burying the past, and we cannot wait to hear from what he has for us this evening, I am waiting, and I'm asking you, my brother, my sister, what are you waiting for? May God bless us. May God bless each and every one of us as we listen to these messages, and particularly as we come to the end of this series. Please make a decision for Jesus Christ. As you listen to him, you will grasp a deep love for Christ in his sermons. May God bless you as we listen to these wonderful sermons again. God bless you, the man of God, Pastor Mark Finley, here with us. Thank you. Jabari, Jambo Jabari, Zeno, so glad to see each of you here tonight. We know that around Africa, in East Africa, God is doing something amazing. I, I'm just so excited. Every night I am presented with these reports, and they're just thrilling to see what God is doing and how God is moving. You've had a preliminary report tonight already, but let me share with you some things that are, are happening. Here's the Hillview Seventh-day Adventist Church in Kisimo, and uh, they're following these messages, and God is just speaking to hearts there, and men and women and boys and girls there at Hillview SDA Church are making eternal decisions for Christ. Remember the other night I talked to you about Pastor Ezekiel. Pastor Ezekiel is an ordained Methodist pastor in North Congo. He was watching Hope Channel in his home, and he saw this broadcast on the messages of Christ for the book of Revelation. He heard the Sabbath that stirred his soul. Then he heard the message on the change of the Sabbath. It so impressed him that he followed through, began studying the Bible with our Adventist pastors there, and he's ready for baptism. Can you greet Pastor Ezekiel? Just wave your hand. Pastor, if you're watching, we have thousands greeting you. We are welcoming you to the fellowship of believers of Seventh-day Adventist, a Bible-believing, Christ-centered message of hope for the world. Uh, in North Tanzania, one of our Muslim friends, I'm so thankful for our Muslim friends, offered a cinema hall for neighbors to watch Hope for Africa. Aren't you thankful that we have some Muslim friends that are offering their cinema hall to watch Hope for Africa? Let's greet any of our Muslim friends that are watching and thank you for offering your cinema hall. In uh, Rungai, here in South Nairobi, not far from this site, we've set up another screen in a field. And so we greet those of you who are there. You know, in Ethiopia, just two days ago, Ethiopia celebrated their new year because they're on the Julian calendar. 
And we have thousands who are following the Hope for Africa series uh, in the different sites in Ethiopia. So far in Ethiopia, there have been 580 people baptized, but they tell me by a message that they've got hundreds and hundreds of people in preparation for baptism. Many of them on this Sabbath will be baptized. For those that of you that are listening in Amharic, the language of Ethiopia, or one of the dialects of Ethiopia, we here at New Life say to you, praise the Lord. Let's say it together. Praise the Lord. God is at powerful work. Let's pray together as we open the Bible for tonight's presentation. Father in heaven, how we thank you for the many sites around the East Central Africa Division and throughout Africa. We learned tonight that Hope Channel Zambia is broadcasting our messages and we know that other sites in West Africa uh, and uh, South Southern Africa are broadcasting these programs as well. Lord, I pray for every viewer. Tonight I pray especially for those viewers at home that are hearing these messages. May their hearts be touched. May they make eternal decisions for Christ. For those that are watching in fields, refugee camps, in shops, in churches, in schools, Lord, tonight, may they hear the message of God and may they be touched to make eternal decisions for you. In Christ's name, amen. Revelations, people of destiny. Down through the centuries, God has always had a people that have followed his word. The light of truth has never gone out by the winds of error or apostasy or false doctrine. In every generation, God has always had a group of people. Some of those, at times, his group has been small. They've not been in the majority. Let's go back to the days of Noah. In Noah's day, as Noah preached for 120 years, God blessed his preaching miraculously. Eight souls entered into the ark. Was anybody saved in Noah's day that did not enter the ark? Not at all. The group was not large, but God had a faithful group there. And God gave a message through Noah that every human being who heard that message had to make an eternal choice. So in the last days of Earth's history, God once again will have a message that goes out to prepare the world not to be destroyed by water, but for the coming fiery climax of Earth's history. God's desire is to reach out in love so that every human being might be saved. In Noah's day, God had a people. You come to the days of Abraham. Again, God called Abraham out from the majority. That's God's plan. He calls men and women out from the majority, out from the large culture around them. The Bible writes of Abraham because Abraham, Genesis 26, verse 5, because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. God's people always listen to his voice. God's people always obey his commands. One of the things that characterize God's people down through the centuries is their love for God, their love enough to be obedient to God. As God called out Abraham, he, Abraham, had Isaac and Jacob. Jacob has 12 sons that become the 12 tribes of Israel. And Israel becomes God's chosen people, his special people. When they were faithful to him, they were as well characterized as an obedient people. Deuteronomy 11, verse 1. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, and his commandments and laws. So we discover three things tonight, something about Noah, something about Abraham, something about Israel. Every one of them loved God enough to be faithful to God. They stepped out in obedience to God. They were always not in the majority, but they were always faithful and obedient. Christ comes, 
Many in the Jewish race accept him, some reject him. Jesus is nailed to the cross for our sins. He's raised from the dead, ascends to heaven, commissions his church, his disciples, to go out and preach the gospel. 3,000 are baptized on the day of Pentecost, and they go out following Jesus' commission where Jesus said, Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have, what? Commanded you. So from Noah's day, to Abraham's day, to Israel, to the New Testament church, God has always had a people in this world. 2 Peter chapter 2, 9 says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his special people, that you have to proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God has always had a chosen people, always had a special people, a people that loved God enough to obey him. In the New Testament, a people saved by grace, a people transformed by love, a people redeemed by the cross, a people that have heeded Christ's words that have said in John, Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Would you then not expect that God would have a chosen people in the last days that are saved by grace, that love him and keep his commandments. Does God have a people on earth today called his church? Where would you expect to find them? What would you expect them to be teaching? Well, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, I read a definition of the church. I write so that you know how to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So here's one definition of the church. The church is the pillar and ground of the truth. So the true church, God's chosen people, God's special people, must be anchored in the word of God. They do not accept compromise from that word. The basis of their faith is on the word of God. They're saved by grace, changed by love, a faith anchored in the word of God that leads them to obey God. That's why Jesus said in John 17, verse 17, sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. So God's special people, God's chosen people, God's end time people would be obedient to him. They would follow the truth of his word. The book of Revelation describes that end time people. Wouldn't you expect that God's end time people would be described in the last book of the Bible for with God's last message for humanity? Would God have a chosen people again? Would God have a special people again? Would God have a divine movement that he raised up to herald his last day message? Would he have a movement that followed in the tradition of Noah to get a world ready for the flood, that followed in the tradition of Abraham to call men and women out to be obedient, that followed in the tradition of faithful ancient Israel that reflected his love and grace at times of their obedience? Would he have a people like the New Testament church that anchored their faith in the word of God, that were saved by grace, that were called people to obedience. Would God have that people at end time? Certainly. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, we read that the dragon, Satan, is angry with God's last day people. It says, the dragon was angry with the woman. Who's the woman, everybody? What's another name for the woman? The what? The church, your good Bible students. And the dragon Satan is angry with the church. He goes to make war with the remnant of her seed. What's another name for remnant? Is the remnant the first part of, of a piece of cloth? If the remnant's the last part, right? But the remnant must be the last part that's just like the original. The dragon is angry with the church. And if you make a decision for Christ, the devil's going to be angry with you. But thank God Jesus never lost a battle with Satan yet. The, 
the dragon is angry with the woman. He goes to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So here, the Bible defines God's last day people. There is hope for Africa because we don't have to wander in insecurity. We don't have to wander wondering, does God have a chosen special people today? There's hope for Africa because God has outlined in the book of Revelation that he would have an end time people faithful to his word that keep his commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now the first thing we notice about God's end time people, they keep the commandments. How many of those commandments do God's, does God's end time church teach the world to keep? Do they teach the world to keep five out of the ten? What do you think? Do they teach the world to keep seven out of the ten? What do you think? Do they teach the world to keep all ten commandments? Is that necessary? Is one of those commandments the Sabbath commandment? So if you're looking for the remnant church today, you're not looking for any church you're looking for God's chosen special people today. Can any church that does not keep the Bible Sabbath, can that, according to Revelation 12, 17, be the remnant church? Can it be of anybody? Not at all. So if we're looking for the remnant church, if we're looking for God's last day people, we must find a church that, keep, that leads people to keep the commandments of God, including the Bible Sabbath. Notice what it says in Hebrews chapter 10. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds I will write them. What does it mean that God's law is in our heart? That it's not some legalistic requirement. That we love to obey God because we love Jesus and we know Jesus would never lead us astray and we know the commandments are given for our joy and happiness. So we, we, the commandment in our heart means that we love it. The commandment in our mind means that we know it. So as you've been coming to these meetings, you've learned to love Jesus. You've learned to love the Christ who's given you his law. And you know his law is not some legalistic requirement to restrict your freedom, but his law is to bring joy and happiness. So your heart is filled. And as David, you say, oh Lord, I desire to do your will. God's law is in our heart. God's law is in our mind. Revelation 12, 17 says the dragon, angry with the church, goes to make war with the last day church that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. What's this testimony of Jesus all about? Revelation 19, verse 10 says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what would we expect in the last days of earth's history. We would expect God to raise up a Bible-believing, Christ-centered movement that calls men and women everywhere of every nation, creed, tongue, and people to keep the commandments of God. We would expect also that this would be a Sabbath-keeping movement, and if it has the testimony of Jesus, another word for testimony is witness. We would expect it to be guided by the gift of prophecy that would lead it to become a worldwide movement. That's the identifying marks in Revelation 12, 17. But what would this message, what would this movement preach? What specific teachings would it have? Revelation chapter 14 builds on Revelation chapter 12. John says in Revelation 14, verse 6 and 7, we've studied this in three or four messages. I saw another angel flying. What does the angel do, everybody? What does he do? He flies. Here's an urgent message. In the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. So this last day message is to uplift Jesus Christ. Jesus says, if I'm uplifted, all men and women will be drawn to me. We must find a Bible-believing, Christ-centered church, the everlasting gospel, that whoever you are, wherever you are, your sins can be forgiven. Whoever you are, you have not fallen so far that Jesus cannot lift you up. Whoever you are tonight, your sins can be forgiven. The guilt can be gone. Condemnation can be gone. Whoever you are tonight, the power of the gospel can change your life just tonight. 
I got a special WhatsApp email from Leticia. Leticia lives in northern Tanzania. Leticia was born with a chain around her neck. Her grandmother was a devil worshiper. Her mother was a devil worshiper. She was brought up to worship the devil. But she heard the gospel of Christ in the Hope for Africa meetings. She heard the preaching of Jesus Christ in the Hope for Africa meeting. She heard that her sins could be forgiven. She heard that the power of the gospel was greater than the power of all the demons and all the witchcraft. One of the most joyous pictures I ever received was Letitia. And in the picture, there was the fire where she burned all of her witchcraft. And she is studying the Bible, preparing to be baptized. Praise the Lord. The everlasting gospel is to go to the ends of the earth. But the message goes on to preach to those who dwell on the earth. This is God's last day church to every nation, every tribe, every tongue, and every people. So God's last day church is not going to be some little denominational church over here, some little non-denominational church. God's last day church that keeps the commandments of God, that leads people back to the gospel, that's guided by the gift of prophecy, has to be an international movement. Seventh-day Adventists are in over 200 countries in the world. A well-to-do, very wealthy, American businessman decided he would do a worldwide trip around the world. When he came back from his worldwide trip, some of his wealthy friends said, what impressed you about traveling the world? What did you see all around the world? He said, you know what? Every place I traveled in the world, I saw Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. They weren't attending Dr. Chitty and Miss Finley's lectures. But anyway, so he said, every place I went in the world, I saw Coca-Cola. Second, every place in the world, I saw Goodyear tire, the rubber tires. He said, you know what else I saw every place in the world? Seventh-day Adventists. <laughs> he said, every place in the world I went, Adventists are a movement, not simply a church, a divine movement to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. The true church will be a worldwide body committed to Christ and obedient to his word. His church will be a spirit-filled church that is impacting the world. But our text goes on, saying with a, what kind of voice, everybody? What kind of voice? Loud voice. Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. What does it mean to fear God, to respect God? to take God seriously, to take his word seriously, to say, God, whatever you ask me to do, I'm going to do. What does it mean to give glory to God? To give glory to God means to honor him in how we live, both in our diet and in our lifestyle. So God's true church would be a divine movement based on the word of God, sharing the grace of Christ, uplifting the cross of Christ, calling people to obedience to the commandments of God, calling men and women of every race, creed, culture to give glory to God, and it would have an end-time health message, not simply to give people healthy bodies, as important as that is, but health is part of God's last day message to prepare the mind to receive the message of Christ through the Holy Spirit. Remember what our text said, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. God's last day church would be presenting the idea that we're living in the judgment hour, that we're living just before the second coming of Christ. It would get people ready to receive Jesus as he comes again in the clouds of glory. It would be an Adventist church, and it must be a Seventh-day Adventist church, because the Bible says, worship him that made heaven, earth, sea, and the springs of waters. Who made the heaven, earth, sea, and the springs of waters? What do we call him? The creator. So he, there would be a movement, according to be revelation, that would call people back to worshiping the creator. And how do we worship the creator? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God and in it you shall do no work because 
he ended his work on that seventh day. So the Sabbath is part of an eternal last day message. Revelation 14 climaxes the exact same way that Revelation 12, 17 climaxes. Here's the patience of the saints. Here's my end time church. Here are they that keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. Are you looking for a Bible-believing Adventist movement? Are you looking for a movement that uplifts Jesus Christ? Are you looking for a movement that exalts the grace of God and leads people to the cross to find the power of Christ? Are you looking for a movement that does not downplay the Bible, but exalts the Word of God, leads people to keep God's commandments, and leads them to keep the Bible Sabbath? Jesus himself has promised that he would raise up a movement like that to prepare a world for the coming of Jesus. God's true church will recapture the pure faith of the disciples. It'll have the dual characteristics of keeping God's commandments and it'll be guided by the gift of prophecy. It'll be a worldwide mission-driven movement. It will call people to total, total commitment to Christ. It'll lead people to keep the Bible Sabbath. It'll encourage people to give their bodies to Christ and make, it'll make a final appeal for men and women to accept the truth of God. I want you to come with me tonight on a journey. We're going to journey around the world, and I want to introduce you to Adventists all over the world, of every nation, kindred, tongue, and culture. I want you to see the miracles that God is doing. I want you to sense that God has raised up a message and a movement in the last days, a movement like Noah's day, a movement like Abraham's day, a movement like Israel, a movement like New Testament Christianity. So come with me around the world. Our first stop tonight is Moscow. We have over, we have over 30 churches in Moscow in the heart of Russia there, I remember, going to the Kremlin, standing there in the Kremlin Auditorium where the Communist Party met and preaching to 13,000 people a night. At first, the government of Russia said, we will allow you to have your meetings, but you cannot bring Bibles in, nothing in boxes. It's so secure. We wanted to give to the Russian people 20 thousand Bibles, but at first we were forbidden. We prayed and prayed. The next picture you're looking at is a miracle. You see that Russian army truck by the side of the Kremlin? Finally, the government said, we will allow you to bring Bibles in, but the Russian army trucks must carry them. The Russian soldiers must bring them in. First time in my life I ever had Russian soldiers as my deacons in the meeting. Praise the Lord. We saw 3,000 people baptized in Moscow in a three-year period. God is working around the world. Come with me tonight to the Ukraine, that war-torn country. This is the cultural center. It was built on the top of a KGB prison. Khrushchev walked into this cultural center. He stood here in this marvelous auditorium, and he said, in 25 years, there will not be one Christian left in the Soviet Union. But when there is, when the last Christian dies, and that, mu that myth of Christianity is gone, we'll stuff that Christian. Put him in a museum in Moscow, and so that future generations can know what a Christian looks like. I stood on that same platform. We satellited our message up into the sky, over the television network that communists had built. We made our appeals from that very auditorium where Khrushchev spoke and praise the living God. Hundreds of Ukrainians were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, proving that Khrushchev is a liar because he can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Come with me to Hungary, there in Budapest. The miracles of God. God is working miracles for his end time church. We were going to have our meetings there. The first time in 40 years. But what I didn't know is Hungary's famous rock band of rock and roll music had rented the same auditorium. So 
when we opened our doors for the second session that night, hundreds of young people ran into the auditorium thinking they were coming to the rock concert. These four girls came in. There were so many young people that you couldn't even get a seat. They were standing. These girls were standing four deep. They were followers of the famous hungry rock band. At the end of the meeting, their hearts were touched. They came to me and they said, Pastor Mark, we heard something tonight. These were communist young people. This was in the days of communism. And these four girls came. They said, Pastor, we have to come to every meeting. They came to the meetings. They came to a rock concert, but they met Jesus Christ, the rock of ages. I want to show you these girls 20 years after their baptism. This is their baptism. Here's 20 years later. There's my wife with them, but then the next girl, Anako, married a Seventh-day Adventist minister. The second girl in yellow married a young preacher, single young preacher. She became a pastor's wife. The third girl became a Bible worker. They came to a rock concert. They met Jesus, the rock of ages. God is working around the world. Come with me to Cuba. We prayed. We said, God, for the first time in history, give us a public auditorium in Cuba. I was there when they were celebrating the 50th anniversary of the revolution. God's working around the world, my brother and sister. The government of Cuba gave us free this auditorium. People came by truckloads. For the first time in history, we had a public baptism. These are Cuban pastors baptizing hundreds in the baptismal pool. God is honoring his last day church. Revelation 14 verse 6 says, I saw another angel flying in the middle of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to go to every nation, every tongue, every people. This is being fulfilled today. Come with me to South America. This is Peru. It's a stadium with 50,000 people in it. Here we made appeals for Christ. The stadium is packed. One of the army generals in Peru, here's his picture. He says, I want to give my life to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, so I want to be baptized in my military uniform. I thank God for those that are being baptized today from the military here in Africa. Here is Brazil. We were satelliting via Hope Channel in Brazil. Hundreds came to our meetings in Brazil, satellited there. We set up 100 baptismal pools. Now this is amazing, first time in history. We rented this big stadium. We set up these 100 baptismal pools all around the stadium and baptized and baptized. You are becoming part of a worldwide movement. You know, here I am with two remote Indians. The message of God went into the jungle and these Indians came to Christ with their tribe. Can you say hallelujah? It's going by television, it's going by radio, God is moving. Here is China, Shenyang, China, a Seventh-day Adventist church in China. 6,000 members when we went, it has 8,000 members now, and this is the choir in that church. But you know, here's a miracle. That's, that's some choir, isn't it? I love African choirs, but I'll tell you, this China choir was really amazing. After we were there, we applied to hold an evangelistic meeting in China. The government gave me a 10-year visa to come into China. We came to Nanjing, China. These pictures are from Nanjing. Nanjing. This is the, not the choir. This is the group in the first baptism in Nanjing, China. 200 people. You have 500,000 brothers and sisters in Nanjing, China. You see, Seventh-day Adventists, they're not some little movement. They are a movement of God, raised up by God to prepare a world for the coming of Christ. And tomorrow, rather on Sabbath, when men and women are baptized here, they'll be baptized in China as well, because China is baptizing people around the world. People on this Sabbath will be baptized in the United States. 
baptized in Asia, baptized in Africa, baptized in Inter and South America. Take India, for example. We land in India. It was difficult. One of our associate pastors putting up posters for our meetings was beaten. He, the militants there beat him, bloodied his nose, crushed his glasses, but we kept praying. We had to have our meetings in the hall designed for atheism because that was the only place the militants wouldn't come. But on one Sabbath, we baptized 500 people there. God is working in Europe. God is working in Asia. God is working in China. God is working in India. God is working in Inter in South America. And praise the Lord, God is working in Africa. Let me take you to Africa tonight. We first go to the country of Angola. We were invited there to come. I preached in the national stadium there when I made the appeal in Angola. Hundreds came, gathered around the tracks because God is working in Africa tonight. Rwanda. One of the things I ask the pastors in Rwanda is, what do you want more than anything else to preach the gospel? They said, Pastor, give us bicycles. We brought 500 bicycles with us. These Bible workers went out in Rwanda riding on their bicycles and leading men and women to Christ. Tonight, God is working in Rwanda. Those of you that are listening in the Kiryuandan language tonight, I know that many of you will walk through the water. You want to be part of God's worldwide movement. God's working in South Africa tonight. You know, we're invited to come to South Africa and uh, I said to the brethren and sisters there, where am I going to preach? They said, at Witz University. I said, Witz, that's a very sophisticated university. I'm happy to preach there. But when I go someplace, I preach to all ethnic groups. Will many people from Sweto come? They said, oh, no, Pastor, they won't come. I said, then pitch me a tent in Sweto. I'm going to Sweto and preach where our colored and black folk are. I'm not going to just preach in one place. I'll hold two meetings, one in Witz University, one in Sweto. Pitched a tent in Sweto. But by the end of the meetings, people came together. The blacks came together, the coloreds came together, the whites came together. And here they are all together now in one stadium. Can you praise God for that? Praise God. And here's the baptism that we had. 1,000 people baptized there in South Africa. Look at the joy on this young man's face. We go to Nigeria, Babcock University, preaching there and watching men and women, boys and girls, come to Christ. There's hope for Africa. But let's go to Tanzania. Pastor Lukendayo is here tonight. And praise God. Stand up and wave, Pastor Lukendayo. I want your people to see you. President here of one of our unions in Tanzania. You remember this day, Pastor Lukendayo? Here they are in Tanzania, in Mwanza, lining up. 2,000 there baptized that day. But wait a minute, here they are in the Congo, a husband and wife being baptized. And here are the Maasai people being baptized. Here in Kenya and Tanzania are Maasai. I thank God that the message is coming to the Maasai. Here they are in Kenya being baptized, walking into the water of baptism. Their lives are being changed. Here, a swimming pool, just like we're going to have Sabbath. God is moving. Does God have an end time church today? Revelation 14, verse 6. I saw. I saw, John says. John says, I saw it in vision. I saw another angel flying, a message to go quickly. I saw an angel flying with the everlasting gospel of Christ, the good news of God's grace, the good news of God's power. I saw another angel flying in the middle of heaven to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. God has raised up a movement around the world saying, fear God, leading men and women back to obey God, to keep his commandments, give glory to God with all of the faculties of your mind and body, living in the judgment hour to get people ready for the coming of Christ, a Sabbath-keeping divine movement. Jesus said, Matthew 24, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom, not any gospel, not some gospel, this gospel of the kingdom, this teaching of Scripture, this Bible-based teaching of Scripture, this gospel of the kingdom, will be preached in all the world 
as a witness for all nations. Then, then the end shall come. These prophecies are being fulfilled around the world tonight. Seventh-day Adventists in over 200 countries. Adventists in over 22 million of them. I'm not a Seventh-day Adventist tonight because I was born in the Seventh-day Adventist church. That's not why I'm an Adventist. I was born in a lovely Catholic home. I was educated early on for eight years by the priests. But there was something missing in my heart, something missing in my life. I didn't have that assurance of salvation in Christ. I didn't have that peace that only Christ can, could give. I didn't have that sense of forgiveness and freedom from guilt. And as I began to study God's word, I found Jesus. Jesus is so precious. Jesus who redeems you by his grace. Jesus who changes you by his power. My dad had become an Adventist. He had helped me to study the word of God as I began to study. I read Jesus' word, if you love me, keep my commandments. I began to understand the significance of the Bible Sabbath. I began to understand when I studied Revelation that God had a last day end time movement a movement that would go to the ends of the earth, I sensed that the only church, the only movement, the only denomination that fit the characteristics of the book of Revelation was the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I had to make a decision. What was I going to do? Would I step out from most of my family, except my father? Would I step out from my friends? What could I do? There was only a little Adventist church of 40 members in that city. And I was the captain of the Catholic basketball team. I was a member of a Catholic youth group of 500. Some little church would I go there? But I'll tell you what moved me to decision. It was a sense that I was following Jesus. It was a sense that I was following God's word. It was a sense that God had a movement of every nation, kindred, tongue, and people and that Christ's word would triumph, Christ's will would triumph, Christ's people would triumph, the gospel would go to the ends of the earth. I am calling you tonight to something big for God, something grand for God, not some little denomination. I am calling you tonight to make a decision to be part of God's end time movement, to serve Jesus. There's hope for Africa. There's hope for your life. God has a plan for you, and he invites you to make an eternal decision for Christ. Tonight, would you like to say, Jesus, I want to be part of your end time movement. I want to be part of a movement that's going to the ends of the earth. I want to be part of something big for God. I want to follow Jesus in these last days. If you are an Adventist tonight, and you've already made that decision, I invite you to reaffirm it. If you are not an Adventist tonight. I invite you to commit your life to Christ. Would you like to say, Jesus, I want to follow you. Jesus, I want to be part of your end time movement. Would you just like to stand? You may be an Adventist, you may not be, but you've heard the call of God wherever you are tonight, Tanzania, Rwanda, wherever you are tonight, Uganda, wherever you are tonight, Ethiopia, wherever you are tonight, Kenya. I invite you to make that decision for Jesus. Jesus is calling you. He's calling you to be part of something more than a denomination, to be part of something more than a church. He's calling you to be part of a movement, a movement of all races and creeds and nations and languages and tongues. He's calling you to be part of an end time movement to prepare a world for the coming of Jesus. If tonight God is calling you to be baptized, to be part of that movement, I want you to come. If God is calling you to be rebaptized, you've drifted away, I want you to come. If you're not quite ready for baptism, but you say, you know what? I do hear the call of God to follow all of his truth. I want to come and prepare for baptism. Many of you will be baptized on Sabbath. If God's calling you, if the Spirit of God has been moving on your heart, You've been attending the baptismal class here. I went out this afternoon and prayed with the baptismal class. You've been attending the baptismal class, you come. If you've not been attending the baptismal class, you come. Wherever you are tonight, if God is convicting you, God is moving on your heart, God is touching your life, let the Holy Spirit lead you. 
come forward and we'll pray for you. Pastor, come. David, make an appeal. Begin to come now and I will greet you as you come. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Baptismal class, you come. Others, you come. Jo sasa kwa Yesu. Jo sasa kwa Yesu. Ni wakati wa kujitoa kwa Yesu sasa. Kwa wale wote ambao mko tayari kwa ajili ya ubatizo ni muda wa kuja sasa na mchungaji ameshuka kabisa ili kumsalimia kila mtu anayekuja hapa na kupokea mkono wa baraka. Ikiwa Bwana anakuita ndani ya moyo wako unasikia ushawishi, tafadhali sogea hapa mbele kule kwenye vituo, endelea kujitoa kule kwenye vituo na wachungaji wa injilisti wa kanisa walioko kule ni wakati sasa wa kuwapokea watu wanaokuja kwa Yesu. Fanya maamuzi sasa usiku wa leo, maamuzi ya kujiunga, maamuzi ya kujiunga na kanisa hili ambalo Bwana ameliweka ni kanisa lake la siku za mwisho. Tafadhali sogea hapa mbele sasa popote ulipo jiunge na kundi hili Bwana ndiye anayekuita Bwana ndiye anayekuita Tafadhali sogea hapa mbele ili uweze kupokea baraka za Bwana Men and women are coming to Jesus Ninaona wanaume na wanawake wanakuja kwa Yesu In Uganda you come Kule Uganda njoo kwa Yesu In Ethiopia you come Kule Ethiopia njoo kwa Yesu In Sudan and Somalia you come Kule Sudan na Somalia njoo In Tanzania you come Kule Tanzania njo kwa Yesu Wherever you are tonight Popote ulipo siku wa leo God has a purpose for your life Bwana ana makusudi na maisha yako God has hope for your life Bwana ana matumaini na maisha yako Somebody hesitating here Kuna mtu anasita mahala fulani You come tonight Jo siku wa leo God has a bigger plan for your life than you can ever imagine Bwana ana mpango mkubwa na maisha yako There is hope for you. Kuna tumaini kwa ajili yako. There is hope for Africa. Kuna tumaini kwa ajili ya Afrika. Let God stir in your heart. Hebu mwachie Mungu aweze kusema naye ndani ya moyo wako. You say pastor I'm not ready to make this decision yet. Unasema mchungaji uenda siko tayari kufanya maamuzi haya leo. There's still some issues in my life. Kuna mambo bado katika maisha yangu. Come tonight. Lakini nakwambia njo. Surrender those issues. Njo hayo mambo tutayamaliza hapa hapa njo and let God deal with them. Acha Mungu ayashughulikie mambo hayo. You cannot deal with those issues alone. Huwezi kuyamaliza hayo mambo peke yako. You come tonight. Njo usiku wa leo. Let God take care of the things in your life you're concerned about. Acha Mungu ashughulikie hayo mambo mazito katika maisha yako. Acha Mungu God is moving tonight. Bwana anasogea mahali hapa. God is touching hearts tonight. Bwana anagusa moyo wa mtu usiku wa leo. It takes faith to step out inahitaji imani kusogea hapa mbele kuchukua hatua it takes courage to step out inahitaji ujasiri kutembea hapa mbele but as you take that step of faith lakini kama ukichukua hatua hii ya imani god is going to strengthen you bwana anakwenda kukupa nguvu god is going to empower you bwana anakwenda kupatia uwezo so wherever you are tonight god bless you still more are coming god bless you watu wengi bado wanakuja wengi wanakuja bado jesus will honor you Bwana ana, ana, ana Jesus will strengthen you. Bwana atakupatia hiyo imara. More coming over here God bless you. Naona wengi wanaendelea kuja upande huu njoni tu njoni. Just come tonight. Njoni usiku wa leo. I want to make a special appeal. Nahitaji kufanya wito maalum sasa. There is somebody. Kuna mtu who if Jesus came tonight. Ambaye Yesu angekuja usiku wa leo. You would not be ready. Usingelikuwa tayari kwenda naye. You once walked with the Adventist people. Una unahitaji but you've drifted away. Unahitaji lakini unajisikia kama umetanga mbali na Bwana. God speaks to your heart tonight. Bwana anaongea na moyo wako usiku wa leo. He invites you to come. Anakualika uje. Come home to Jesus. Jo kwa nyumbani kwa Yesu. Whatever you have done. Popote ulipo. God can remake your life. Mungu atatengeneza tena maisha yako. God can forgive you. Bwana anaweza kusamehe. This is a new beginning. Huu ni mwanzo mpya. This is a new start for you. Huu ni mwanzo mpya. This is your opportunity. Huu ni nafasi ni fursa ya pekee sana. Come now. Jo sasa. Wherever you are come to the screen. Popote ulipo hata kule kwenye vituo mnakofuatilia. There's a lovely Baptist Christian, Pentecostal Christian or some other denomination, non-denomination. kuna watu wa madhehebu mbalimbali wa Pentecost na wengi wengi sana. You've been hearing God's truth. Umesikia ukweli huu wa Mungu. You sense that God has a big movement. Na umeshajua kwamba Mungu analo kundi kubwa sana. A worldwide movement. Ambao ni kundi ambalo liko dunia nzima. There's hope for your heart. Kuna tumaini kwa moyo wako. There's hope for Africa. Kuna tumaini kwa Afrika. You can be part unaweza kuwa sehemu of God's last day church ya kundi hili ambao ni kanisa la Mungu la siku za mwisho like Noah called people into the ark kama vile Nuhu alivyowaita watu kuingia kwenye safina the door is open mlango uko wazi sasa one day that door will be shut kuna siku mlango huu utafungwa come right now njoo sasa wherever you are come right now popote ulipo njoo sasa 
God bless you. Mungu akubariki. Mungu akubariki sana. God bless you. You come, my dear. Come, come, sister. God is moving on hearts more still coming. God bless you. Just come. We're going to pray. Somebody else wants to come. In my mind, I see people coming to screens. They're coming in fields. They're coming in schools. Students are coming. They're coming in churches. They're coming in a Muslim cinema. They're coming. I want to pray. Here's somebody else coming. More people are coming. You come. God bless you. Just come. I don't want to close this call when I see people coming down the aisle. God bless you. Oh, I thank God for you, young lady. Thank God for you, young lady. Here's more coming. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. There's time you can come. Let that sister through. She's coming. I know it takes real courage, but God blesses you as you come. You're going to be part. God's going to do something with your life. God's going to bless you abundantly. We're going to pray. Oh, my Father, tonight, We've seen the miracle working power of God. Men and women, boys and girls, have come. They've come to an altar here. They've come to screens. All across Africa. And Lord, they have come because they've heard the call of God. They've come because the Holy Spirit has convicted them. They've come because there is hope for their lives. Hope in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hope that their sins can be forgiven. Hope that new power can flow into their lives. They've come because they have seen a movement of God. A Christ-centered movement. A Bible-believing movement. A Sabbath-keeping movement. A movement that is getting people ready for the second coming of Christ. They've come because they've seen a worldwide movement. And they long to be part of God's great final movement. I thank you for those that have come. Strengthen them. And as they walk through the water of baptism on Sabbath, may they sense they're one with you. That they're one one with God, united to Christ, filled with his Holy Spirit, and part of the fellowship of Christ. Part of the Seventh-day Adventist movement around the world, raised up by God in these last days. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On Sabbath, we are going to have an amazing baptism. Those of you that have come forward, our pastors will talk to you about re getting ready for baptism. And maybe we should go this way, these seats are empty. So pastors lead them this way.
Yeah. 